Okay, good to go. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Marta. I'm one of the many hosts at CGSW 90.9 FM. I've also been uh, so privileged to be a part of the Beltline Neighborhoods Association, and I'm really delighted to be able to host these 2020 artist talks. So to get started, we'll just go along the line if you want to introduce yourself and say a little bit about your practice. All right, um, I'm Derek Simmers. I'm a Calgary-based artist. I've been active for four years or so. Um, doing murals here and there, generally with uh, my sibling Kyle Simmers, um, and I'm a member of Burton Toast Studios along with Sarah, and uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm excited for to lead my first mural <laughs> for Bump. Right on. Uh, yeah, my name's Sarah Slaughter, and uh, I'm a Calgary-based uh, artist as well. I've done everything. Uh, art anything since I was a young, young kid. There's no startup, but uh, murals are hot, hot, hot right now, and it's uh, a pleasure to do them. I'm Cam Hoff. I'm one half of Slugger Studio with Chris. Uh, we've been uh, doing illustration and graphic design for three years. I've been doing that for 20, and uh, we're just enjoying doing some murals. I'm Chris Pecora. I'm the other half of Slugger Studio with my main squeeze here, Cameron Hoff. Uh, I'm also a graphic designer and illustrator. Um, this is our fourth mural that we've painted together. And we've done a bunch of like boring digital ones that are just printed and slapped up. But yeah, fourth painted one. And uh, yeah, biggest one we've done to date. And it's been challenging and fun and exciting. So I'd love to hear a little bit about the murals that you're preparing or starting to undertake. So why don't we start with you two? Because you're, you're a team on this one. So I'd love to hear kind of what the concept is and um, yeah, how you're planning on executing on it. Uh, well, we're on day three of the mural so far. And uh, we've pretty much got the wall covered, but it's still pretty janky. So we've got to iron out some of the kinks over the next few days. And our concept is a... 40-foot squirrel holding a person in his hand or paw or lobster claw. <laughs> so it's uh, very open to interpretation. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of people come by and they say, "Is are they conversing or is the squirrel going to eat the man? And we like that that's open to interpretation. <laughs> We don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> one, one guy said, is that a dragon? And now, so when people come by and they ask, I'll just I'd like to tell them it's a dragon. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. So yeah. It's like open to interpretation. <laughs> nice. Not really, but. <laughs> Sarah, what about you? Um, I've got an awesome wall on 12th Ave. I like it because it goes right with the, uh, past the bike path uh, on 12th. But it's, um, it's an old school, old school house turn into a company like 1908 it was built so I love the wall itself um, and I'm doing um, like a condo pile up of birdhouses with sneaky cats all the way around uh, the request that I had from the owner was to make something colorful um, and that was about it so I wanted to do something that would make people giggle if they walk by and go oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the reaction I want <laughs> Um, I'm doing a piece inside the CPA parking lot across from National on 10th, and uh, it's going to be kind of like a hallway space leading towards the elevators, which um, the idea is that it's going to be kind of like the first thing that's seen. Um, they're they're going to be doing like a park kind of on the upper deck, and so they want it to kind of be a leading space towards that. And so um, I kind of took the like space as like a bit of a challenge and to like kind of contradict the like enclosed nature of it by making kind of an abstract piece that is intended to feel very like spacious and kind of open and breathy I guess I don't know um, and it's an opportunity to like work with abstract um, and like expressive kind of forms um, I've done a lot of like figurative work in the past so it's kind of a, a move into something different for me. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. Nice. I'm curious to know how your artistic practices kind of 
contribute to or influence your work in murals because again you're in your backgrounds in um, like graphic design and illustration burnt toast is a is a printmaking studio and so how do you bring those other disciplines forward into into mural work and Sarah I'd love to start with you on that one um, I have slight talent in many areas and I just mash it all together and call myself an artist um, I actually learned how to silk screen at Burnt Toast Studio. Uh, that was one of the coolest things that I that I have learned from really good teachers. Otherwise, every time there's a challenge, I go, "How hard can it be? Let's give it a try." <laughs> and hopefully, it turns out well. Hopefully, people like it. So, nice, Cam. What about you? Um, I think I think we as graphic designers we approach uh, murals and art a little differently than a traditional artist. I think it's it's really like kind of process driven and. I don't like in terms of of just style and tools we we generally keep things really flat and graphic uh in terms of like process yeah i don't know the the murals are i feel like there's nothing really in common with what we do on our in our day-to-day -day with graphic design because it's all digital and it's all in a nice comfortable chair and it's on the ground and <laughs> ground. you know like it's you can zoom in and zoom out and it's i don't know it's it's a lot like safer of an environment, and then when you're doing a mural and you're using a lift and you're 40 feet up and you're, and it, I don't know, it's it, it's it's interesting to have to uh, problem solve in a way that is just so physical because I don't really make many physical things. It's all just very like vector-based artwork. Like it's very, yeah. If I want to move something, I can just grab like a little point and drag it and whatever, and that's sort of the extent of, of, of art making or, or illustration making that, that I do on my day to day. And then when it comes to actually applying it to a wall, uh, yeah, I don't know, I find it to be pretty challenging because when something doesn't look right, it's like, all right, it's got to figure out how to fix it. It's challenging, but it's super enjoyable because, yeah. because it's, it's different. And it's like, we spend all our time on the computer and to do something tactile is just, and outdoors is just so refreshing and, like, I fixed my fence last week, and it's kind of the same thing, where it's like, I just really enjoy doing things like that, because it's it's not sitting at a desk in, indoors. It's just tactile and making things and doing things. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like, I, I'm kind of similar. Like, I work digitally a lot, um, or I compose things digitally quite often. Like, I'll work in graphite, generally, and... Um, I don't know, I, I like working with like mark making a lot and texture and things like that. And so um, scaling it um, requires like a lot of certainty, I guess, about the outcome, I find. It's harder to like improvise once you're in a larger space. Um, so in this case, there's gonna be a bit of improvisation, I think, but uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it's just a bit of math. Just a bit of math. Just a bit of math. Well, that, that part I'm not super uh, worried about. We've done like the um, like pretty graphic stuff in the past, and so this one's going to be a lot more like gradients and uh, textural elements, so I'm kind of excited to experiment with that a bit. I'm just curious if you guys um, planned out the piece digitally and then are now kind of working to transpose it or how that kind of process works. I guess I'm picking on the digital artists in the room, sorry, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious how that process kind of worked. Yeah, we, we generally work 100% digital. Like we, for this one, we, we did some sketches in Procreate and then kind of iterated on that in Illustrator and back and forth. Like we, like we usually just pass things between us to, to, to collaborate and iterate and, and even just switching between Procreate and, and Illustrator, you get different tools kind of influence the shapes and the forms and kind of um, morph it and evolve it as you're working with it. You agree with that? Thanks. Um, yeah, like I, I started with Graphite for this one um, and like a lot of it is just kind of like noodling around. Like I'm with this one, I'm just looking for interesting, uh, like mark making yeah. techniques and things like that. Like um, I'm a big fan of life drawing, I guess, and um, 
when I used to do a lot more of that, I guess what I kind of got really wrapped up in is just the way that like a line can, you know, really kind of bring a certain energy to, to a piece. And so with this piece, it's kind of not really, um, trying to depict anything in particular, but it's just kind of like all about that quality, I guess. And so, um, it's going to be interesting taking like these kind of like fine little like feathery marks that are just like this big and then blowing them up and trying to kind of like maintain that sense of fluidity and ease, I guess. So I'm excited to figure out how that's going to work. And Sarah, I'm curious to know, yeah, how, how you kind of planned out your piece. Yeah, I the the privilege of having a, a computer and all of the amazing apps that we have for design, because then you can put everything together, do your line work, um, you know, start with the sketch, scan it in, use Procreate, um, and then start to color it. And it's wonderful to be able to look at this tiny little screen and go, oh, that's a terrible choice. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> don't. <laughs> yeah. And then you close it and you go to bed for the night um, and you look at it in the morning. But uh, I do all of my uh, digital and, nice. and sketch uh, combined. Nice. And so when we're considering mural work, um, you know, it's, it's in a built environment, in a built space. And so I'm curious to know how you considered the context of that built space when you were approaching your work, or was it just, you know, uh, do the work first and then kind of work backwards and, and see how it would fit in the space? Uh, Derek, I might pick on you here, cause, um, or start with you at least, because you kind of had an interesting um, note about, yeah, trying to bring you know, that, that feeling of expansiveness into a parking lot. And so I'm yeah, kind of curious to know how the space influenced your art and vice versa. Uh, yeah, like um, before I had my space uh, given to me, I was uh, thinking of different ways that I could kind of integrate the, the use of the space into it. And I was kind of thinking about like what kind of history is involved with the, the space and stuff. Like the last uh, one that I helped out with with Kyle, last year was on um, a old nightclub. And so we kind of like had a little ode to that in there. And so um, in this case, it was like, it's a really like utilitarian kind of building. So um, it kind of opened up a lot of opportunity, I guess, just to kind of be like, throw whatever at it. And so I guess like the idea of it being um, kind of just mundane in a way, gave me the idea to um, kind of, I don't know, veer as far away from that as I could, I guess, and try and kind of make it more, yeah, I don't know, breathy and big and weird. Nice. Sarah, what about you? Um, I saw the building, and I, like I said, I really like that it's a, a heritage building. Um, but with all of the murals that have gone up for the last three years with Bump, there's been so many that have integrated part of the architecture into the design, uh, and I love it. Whether it's the simplicity of uh, covering up a metal sheet and making it somehow 3D, anything, I looked at that and went, oh, I gotta give that a try. So um, I've done my best to integrate it into my design, um, and it's fun as it goes along. Yeah. Hopefully it works. <laughs> Cam, what about you? Uh, well, our, our uh, first concept was, <laughs> was, gonna was a rat. And nobody really liked the rat. Even though it was a fun rat, it wasn't a gross rat. It was a fun rat. <laughs> um, we, we, should, we should set the context that our, our wall is in an alley. So it's, yeah. it's in an alley. It's alley facing. So our, it's a our rat's natural habitat. Yeah, we wanted something that, yeah, maybe some kind of creature that might abide in the, in the alley. So, but giant. But yeah, <laughs> very large and sort of fit to the, uh, fit to the wall. So um, yeah, we ended up moving to a more likable rodent, the squirrel, Calgary's very popular. Calgary's rat. <laughs> Calgary's rat. <laughs> <laughs> But he's, uh, yeah, he's sitting on the on top of the door, which is, yeah, we kind of really like the idea of integrating um, some of the features of the wall into the space and he kind of, yeah. Yeah, and that's, and that's a benefit of working digitally in Procreate. You have that photo of the actual photo of the wall and I, I like to start kind of drawing right on the actual photo and then you can kind of work the shapes around the window and the obstacles and, and the kind of the, the, the kind of natural features of the wall that are there. Nice. Um, again, 
the thing with murals, of course, is that they're so public. And when it might come to you know to you know your your other artistic practices, there is, for lack of a, a better word, kind of a paywall behind it. Either it's in a gallery space, or there at least is some kind of you know, barrier to entry in, in, in some respects to um, the public viewing your work. But with murals, again, it's totally out in the public. And so I'm wondering if there's any sort of vulnerability to being that public facing. Uh, Sarah, I'll throw that one to you first. I love it. That's my, my favorite part about public murals is that it's totally accessible to anyone at any time for anything. Uh, whether you just want to stare at something pretty, whether you are just noticing it for the first time, it should be part of your day. And maybe you pass it so many times and you see something new. Um, I just like the idea of having it uh, publicly um, in pu full public access. But um, with that mine, I wanted to simply make people giggle. That's the only response that I wanted, even if they pass it by several times. Eh, they look at it, they giggle. They photo in front of it, uh, full on Instagram. You know, <laughs> the the selfie with lots of color. Selfie moment, yeah. Yeah, of course, a selfie yeah. moment. That's uh, that's exactly what we want. So nice. Yeah, uh, Derek, I'm going to throw that one to you, and I'd be curious how you kind of yeah would approach that question, not only in this project, but yeah, kind of your previous mural works as well. Um, I guess my favorite component of the public aspect is uh, like during the process of install. Uh, like having people pass by and comment on it, like that's something that you don't really get to engage with when you're just working privately. And um, yeah, it becomes kind of like this like social aspect that, that is kind of unique to this process. And then after it's done, then I guess through like Instagram and stuff, you get constant feedback of people, you know, like posting selfies <laughs> next to it or whatever. And it's, it's kind of validating, I guess, it's cool. And then it, it also reminds you that like that piece, once it's done, is kind of like not owned by you anymore. It becomes like a property of the people who are using that space regularly and who, you know, happen upon it. Like it becomes kind of, yeah, public. I guess it's cool. Chris. Yeah, well, early on when we started ours, we were kind of trying to figure out what angle we wanted to go with, and ultimately, what makes a project a slugger project is usually there's some kind of element of fun or dumbness or something but <laughs> same kind of idea of like we want people to yeah. laugh at it so i don't know hopefully we're hopefully we're achieving that in, in some respect with this one no i've i've observed people walking by and just kind of laughing we're getting some grins <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just looking for grins. Yeah. Well, and it's really good when other people are, are passing by because they're, I love the guesses. I love the kids compared to the parents oh, and yeah. all the guesses of what, of what you're, you're doing. You turn your volume down in your headphones and you sneaky listen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've actually been getting a lot of people come by and they just kind of come up real close and look and then don't say anything and walk away. So I don't, <laughs> I, that's kind of a new one. I don't know, I don't know what that means. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love these answers uh, because, again, that sense of fun, that sense of playfulness, the giggling, that selfie moment. And so, and we kind of touched on it in the previous question, but yeah, do you feel a sense of responsibility in kind of stewarding the public reaction or kind of eliciting a specific reaction in public art? Or again, is it just, you know, put the art up and, and it'll land where it will? <laughs> It, it, people will interpret all different forms and layers and colors and history of any art piece, no matter what it is. It can be a circle with a dot in the middle of it, um, and people will interpret it in different ways. So as an artist, you have to be prepared for any kind of feedback, whether it's negative feedback, people who hate your piece, or people who are doing selfies right in front of it. You have to be ready for all of it, but you're making something really accessible, so it's, it's a joy to do it. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword, though. You, like, there's that so much pressure. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I feel I feel some pressure to, to perform and make something cool when it's something that's so public versus something that's more private and small. Because you're really cool. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Sarah. Yeah. You're cool, too. Thanks, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Derek, any thoughts? Yeah, I don't know. Other than, like, just being consistent with a like, certain quality, I guess. Um, like, I just kind of want it to be good, I think. Like, 
I want it to be received well. Um, like responsibility is an interesting word to use. Like, I think, yeah, like I, I feel responsible to make good work because I think that if like the intent of, of art should be to kind of like enliven a space. And so if it's doing that, then I think it's successful. Um, as far as like responsibility towards like content goes, I think that that is like a really personal process for the artist. And I think that the best that you can do is, I guess, bring some honesty to the work. And um, part of that should be like, you know, considering the fact that you are, that it isn't going to be yours afterwards. So, you know, trying to kind of like preemptively have this kind of like conversation is part of the process, I guess. Um, and yeah, I guess that, that changes with each project. So it, it's really dependent on where it's going to end up. So Bump is now in its third year of commissioning um, murals all across the belt line. And I'm curious to know what you think the role of public art like like the murals, projects like Bump kind of have um, in terms of community building. Um, Chris, maybe I'll throw that one to you. What's the question? Yeah, so that, that's my fault. Let's, <laughs> let's rephrase that better. So what do you think the role is of, of public art to, to create community, or what place does it have in the sense of community building? Well, I think just having public art and having something that, um, you know, a large group of people can access um, freely on the street, um, you know, it, it gives us something that we can then share in common with each other. And we, we all get to have the experience of viewing some of this stuff. Um, I know, like, personally, I feel like it's really, really, um, yeah, it, it's transformed this area of the city. Uh, like I've been in Calgary for 10 years. Uh, I've been to cities like Montreal where like every single wall has a mural on it. And I, yeah, just so happy that it's happening here because you can walk down the street and you're not just staring at, uh, you know, either blank walls or walls that have tags on them or walls that, ha that had tags. and. That's, got covered up. That's even worse. You know, so... Um, Cut the covered tags. Oh. Like, to, to bring beauty into the city and to bring it, like, just interesting art and, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's... I think it's really powerful and it, it really has transformed uh, the city in, in the sh sort of short time that Bump has been... has been running, so... Yeah, and it's it's a range of, of reaction. Like, you talk about wanting people to giggle and we talk about we want people to smile or... It's it's something fun that's going to make people smile. There's other pieces that are more kind of uh, make you kind of think or make you look into yourself. There's more re reflection. So I th I think there's like a wide range of of value that comes from from public art and the pieces uh, even just within Bump. I think like the nature of a festival too is interesting. Like one, the fact that um, it's all happening at once, people know about it. They're like keen to come check out the people working on it in the, like in the process and getting to interact with the artists is a cool opportunity, especially for people that are, like are aspiring to do it themselves. Like it's a great opportunity to just watch for like a minute or so and ask some questions and that kind of thing. And then uh, the other aspect would be just like the fact that we get to meet other artists is really cool. Like. Last year, I met some really, really cool artists and um, have like kept in contact with them. And the nature of, of that community building, I think, is really special and something I appreciate a lot. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we cover up the beige walls in Calgary, and it gets better and better. <laughs> Born and raised, it's one of the things that we never saw. And it's uh, really positive for everything from tourism to the simplicity of chatter uh, between people walking down the streets. And yeah, this panel is great because yeah, um, you're all local artists, and so I'm really curious to know how this question is going to land, which is just Calgary's kind of reception to public art in general. Because I know with certain maybe sculptural pieces, they can be a bit more 
contentious or there's a bit more debate around them. And so I'm curious to know, just from your experience and your interpretation, how Calgary's uh, um, attitudes towards public art might be changing or not. Uh, maybe I'll throw it to Sarah. Of course, you throw the hard question to me. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, make, I'll make no jokes uh, about Alberta. We have continuing arts and culture development, and that's amazing and, and really important. That's, that's something that I appreciate, and it's, it's creating a lot of work for a lot of really good people. Pass it on to people who have <laughs> better linguistics and put more thought into it. Derek. Well, I don't know. Derek, <laughs> don't that's know. you. Um, like the feedback that I definitely got working on past murals is that it's like something that's been like uh, overdue, let's say, I guess. Like um, the people that come out and, and say like finally Calgary's doing this, there's like quite a lot of people that have wanted this for a while it seems um, and have been kind of, yeah, led down, I guess, by certain um, certain public art expenditures in the past and so <laughs> we're talking about the big blue ring let's just get yeah. that and the sweet finger trap the, which one the bridge the, the finger br trap what's that oh the peace bridge the peace bridge oh yeah, yeah. i like the peace bridge but <laughs> um yeah i don't know people people seem pretty stoked about it happening yeah i think i think the general reception of murals is is generally pretty good like versus like it's interesting you bring up sculpture because th that does seem to be the stuff that's more contentious i don't know why but like cost. yeah yeah there, yeah cost is a big piece like the big blue ring the the piece by cop that was controversial and there's there's some of those things that, like you don't see that kind of a, an uproar over a mural not in my experience anyway not yet <laughs> Derek hasn't Just done his yet. <laughs> I'd like to go, yeah, I'd like to push that a little bit because you're kind of totally right that there hasn't been um, as much, yeah, kind of public discourse about murals versus, yeah, again, sculptural pieces. And so why do you think that might be? Why are murals kind of more easily accepted as public art pieces than other forms? I think maybe just like the, um, the fact that it's accessible in a way, like... Um, it's something that, yeah, you know, like we're all Calgary based. So I think that's something that people kind of are happy about that they can kind of like see like the face that is putting it up. It's not like, you know, somebody who lives in Italy who's commissioning um, employees to do it or whatever. It's like, I guess more, um, oh, what's the word for it? I don't know. Attractive. <laughs> DIY? No. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Relatable, maybe? Relatable, yeah. Like, yeah, I feel like people can know. more like easily see themselves in the position of the artist, like putting that up on the wall, rather than um, something that's really a lot more like intensive, I guess. Not that murals aren't intensive, but yeah. But but you 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 talked about the cost a little bit. I I feel like there's something else where there's like sculpture is is there's like a step. Unless it's something really kind of figurative and, and it's kind of a straight representation thing, it's, I don't know, it's a little more artistic, <laughs> for lack of a better word, but, but it's like, it's it takes a little bit of a higher understanding of art to kind of unpack an abstract sculpture than a two-dimensional image, I think, maybe. Yeah. That's something that people do anyway, right? Like, um, you know, just left without any like public support, people will go and yeah, like make tags and stuff. And I think that that's a form of like expression that people you know have a yearning for. And so when it's supported and when it's like cultivated to like a level of I don't know more um, like bigger scales, more relatable concepts. I don't know. I guess it is. But yeah, like when you talk about it, things being more relatable, is it maybe that people feel like that's something I could do? Yeah, I think that's kind not, of not like not to like downplay what we do, but, <laughs> well, but no, nobody looks. It's at something a mural to aspire to, I think, right? Like it's yeah. yeah. No, but we've we've done community murals where we have people from the community. There's a, that whole kind of public art community engagement thing that's often a part of public funded art, mm -hmm. where it's like people come out and they help paint and there's things like that. So the. I think 
anyone can pick up a paintbrush and slap down a block of color on a wall and there's versus casting some giant behemoth piece in bronze like it's just that kind of accessibility like every pretty much everyone's painted something whether it's a yeah. fence or a wall or there there's just that that kind of relatability to it where it's like i i can paint mm-hmm. versus i can cast something in bronze that's 80 feet tall just for a couple mil. Yeah. yeah for a couple mil well, i could do that for a couple mil yeah kind of same thoughts there sarah yeah, I just I, I really like that we still have funding in arts and culture, and that um, what I really like about Bump is the balance between um, everyone from uh, other countries, other provinces, and locals all combined together. Um, I think I think that's amazing, and I think it's a really uh, a really important contribution um, to to have all of the options to make to make it available to everyone. And so kind of uh, to slowly wind down, again, thinking along the lines of um, city building and again, public art in, in the context of Calgary specifically, what do you think individuals can potentially do to continue to champion public art and ensure initiatives like BUMP um, can, can move forward and continue into the future? Social media is the key. Um, I mean, I've, I, my grandmother just got an iPad. <laughs> if you post post everything and people post it for you, and it's integrated into the communities, into all uh, like all activity, um, it, it will continue and it pushes itself. I think that's a really valuable spot. Um, it's the, the the best way to do it. Again, the accessibility, something fully open, and um, you get positive feedback, and it changes. Um, changes the the aura it's a it's a very heavy word but it changes the aura um, in a space and makes it positive like my area was um, it had dumpsters right across from it they've been removed by the city and we're putting colors up it changes the whole space and your experience as you walk through it I love that changing the aura of a space that's yeah. oh, that's perfect yeah yeah I don't know it, it like art inspires I think for a reason right like it's um, it provokes something more than a brick wall does, right? Like, I feel like that's kind of an obvious statement, but um, I don't know, back to the question, I guess, of what people can do to continue championing public art in the city. I think, like, it, you, it can work at, like, small scales. Like, I think people can just, like, hit up their own community associations and try and kind of, like, champion this stuff at, like, whatever scale is possible. Like, there are a lot of micro grants out there for, like, community projects that don't really go to much use and like um you know I, I heard of like an initiative i think in kensington where they did like like an alley mural thing like small things like that i think are really cool and i think you know it, it this stuff starts small like bump started with like four murals in the first year and i mean it's gotten pretty huge in only four years so i think that you know other neighborhood associations can easily replicate this and i think that they should i think it'd be cool yeah our, our first mural before we were Slugger officially, it was one of those neighborhood grants, like a small grant yeah. community association. But yeah, I think one way people can can uh, support arts is to vote for uh, political parties that support the arts. That too. Like I honestly, straight up, like I know Bump lost some funding due to cuts from the UCP this year. And if if you're not, uh, voting for parties that support the arts and and put their money into the arts, then we're going to lose the opportunity to to create art publicly at, at this scale, anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. So yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. Ending on that note. Nice, nice off ball. No, but I think yeah, it's. I mean, it 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 all fits together, right? Like the small micro of changing the aura of. Um, of an alley can lead to yeah the the bigger festivals, which leads to you know hopefully getting that government support. So it's all connected. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, is there anything else you'd like to add uh, as we start to wind down? I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks so much. Um, yeah, folks can check out the Bump website for, 
for details about your project and where it's located. And thanks so much for participating. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you to you guys. <laughs> yeah, thank for you for all the hard work. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. This is well done. an amazing well done, organization. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah.